Protocol buffers or protobufs are a language neutral and platform neutral mechanism developed by Google for serializing structured data. But what does it mean to be language neutral? This means protobufs can be used with many different programming languages like Python, Java, C++, Go, and more. You write your data structure, the schema, in a .proto file, and then protobufs generate code in your preferred language. This way, the same data format can be understood and processed by programs written in different languages. What does platform neutral mean? This means that protobufs can be used across different types of computer systems and platforms, for example, Windows, Linux, Mac OS. It ensures that the data format works the same way no matter where the programs are running. You don't need to worry about specific hardware or software configurations when sharing data. And what does it mean to serialize structured data? Serialization is the process of converting data like text, numbers, or complex objects into a format that can be easily stored or transmitted. Structured data refers to data that has a well-defined structure, like a table or database record, where each piece of data has a clear role, for example, a name, an ID, etc. Protobufs turn this structured data into a compact binary format, making it faster to send over the network or store in a file. Let's take a look at the message definition or schema. The structure of data is defined in a .proto file. This schema defines messages, which are logical groups of fields or data. Each field is assigned a unique tag or number, which is critical for binary encoding. Each field in a message is defined by a type, for example, string, in32, float, etc., and a unique number or tag to help with the binary serialization. This schema specifies the structure of a message, which the protobuf compiler uses to generate code in the desired language, for example, Python, Java, C++, or Go. Going back to this diagram, you can see that we created a .proto file to define the data structure. This serves as the input to the Proto compiler, which generates the code. The output is source files like Java, Python, or C++. The generated code consists of classes or structs that represent the data structure you defined in the .proto file. Now that the protobuf compiler has generated code, for example Python code or Java code, you treat these files just like any other source code in your project. If you are using Python, you might import the generated person underscore pb2.py file and work with the person class like this. You import the compiled protobuf file and you create a new person object. You do this using person underscore pb2.person and then you're able to set the name, ID, and email field. These fields correspond to the string name, in32 ID, and string email of the person message in your .proto file. The next step is serialization and deserialization. Serialization is the process of converting the message into a compact binary format, and deserialization converts the binary back into the original structured data. Let's take a look at the equivalent JSON representation of this .proto file. In JSON, field names like name, ID, and email are repeated for every instance of the object. This adds redundancy, as each field name has to be explicitly written for every instance. In protobuf, these fields are encoded as numbers like 1, 2, and 3, which is much more space efficient. The mapping between field numbers and names is known at compile time. JSON doesn't enforce data types. Everything is essentially a string or a number, and it does not differentiate between different types of numbers like in32, in64, or floats. You only see 1234 without knowing it's a 32-bit integer. There is also metadata overhead. In JSON, the structure of the data, like the fact that the name field is a string, is implied but not enforced. The serialization format is verbose, with no built-in way to declare compact structures. So protobufs use a binary format for data representation, and the message is serialized as a sequence of tag-value pairs, with tags or field numbers acting as compact identifiers. This leads to smaller message sizes and faster processing. JSON is a text-based format. Each field is represented as a key-value pair in a human-readable format. This increases the size because field names are stored alongside values, making the encoding less compact. Protobufs ensure strict type safety. Each field has a predefined type, for example, int32, string, bool, etc., and any mismatch will result in a serialization error. This makes it much safer in scenarios where data integrity is critical. JSON is inherently less type-safe. JSON uses a text-based format where values are loosely typed, for example, numbers, strings, booleans, etc., which could lead to issues in environments that require strict type handling. 
Protobufs easily handle complex nested data structures and supports message inheritance, enumerations, and repeated fields. These are compiled into efficient, strongly typed code for each language. JSON can represent complex data structures but lacks built-in support for features like enums, which means these must be handled manually by developers. JSON also doesn't offer message inheritance, so nested structures are less optimized. In terms of language support, protobufs support multiple programming languages, including Python, Java, C++, Go, JavaScript, and many others. After defining the schema, the protobuf compiler generates optimized code in the desired language. JSON is universally supported by all modern programming languages, but often relies on libraries for parsing and validation, which may vary in quality or performance. What are the use cases of protobufs versus JSON? Protobufs are ideal for systems where performance, efficiency, and bandwidth are critical, such as high-performance RPC systems like gRPC, microservices communication in distributed systems, data serialization for storage in databases, and network communication where compact size is crucial. JSON is better suited for scenarios where human readability and ease of debugging are more important, such as web APIs and HTTP-based communication, simple configuration files, as well as front-end development, for example, JavaScript. Let's say we have a service that exchanges large amounts of structured data between microservices. Using JSON, each request and response contains verbose field names in string format, increasing the size of the payload. Processing each message requires parsing field names and values, leading to higher latency, especially at scale. Using protobuf, each request and response is compactly encoded in binary, minimizing the size and speeding up the processing of messages. The system benefits from strict type checking, ensuring that no invalid data is sent across services. In summary, protobufs offer several advantages over JSON in terms of efficiency, size, and speed. While JSON is more readable and easier to debug, protobufs provide a binary format that's more compact and faster to process with strong typing and schema validation. Protobufs are ideal for high-performance, bandwidth-sensitive applications and scenarios requiring efficient serialization and deserialization of structured data.